Welcome to this Darktable tutorial series. Darktable is a great program for managing and editing your photos, including your raw photos. If you're a photographer, this is a must-have program. Darktable is very similar to Adobe Lightroom, just as professional, just as powerful, only not just as expensive because Darktable is 100% free and open source. If you don't already have Darktable, you can download it for free for Windows, Linux, and Mac. Check out my other videos where I show how to do that. But in this video, we're going to be exploring the interface of Darktable, and we're going to be bringing in some pictures and showing you just what it can do and how to uh, get started with the bare basics. So to bring in a picture, the easiest way is to find it on your computer. So we can go to like pictures here, we can find a picture and we can just drag and drop that picture in. And then we see it appears here. We're in the light, uh, the light table right now. We can drag in a few different pictures just like this. And every time we drag it in, you notice a file is being created for that picture. So as we drag it in, we'll drag in this one here, and then a file gets created to the side of it. This is an XMP file created by Darktable. This has all the information about the picture, all the changes that we've made, which means our picture never gets changed. This picture that we, that we bring in will never be edited or modified or changed at all directly. Instead, all the changes are kept in a record next to that picture and then when we go to export the picture it applies those changes so this is sort of similar you can think of the the light table as, as like a traditional light table for a photographer that's working with film you bring in the different pictures that you want to work with you look at them on the light table then you take them into the dark room to edit them and apply some changes but when you develop your final picture you still always keep your original negative intact unchanged and the changes are only applied to the new picture you've created. This will make more sense as we dive in um, and do more of this in the future. Uh, I just want to show you uh, another quick way we can bring in pictures is in the import tab. We can just click image and import a single image by itself and go to open and just bring in a single image. Uh, and then we go to the light table and we still see them there. We can also bring in the entire folder, which is more practical for most of the time. Just click on under import, click on folder and then go to the folder that you want to bring in and click open. And then it brings in every picture in that folder. And it also creates on our computer, it'll create uh, that XMP file next to each one of those pictures for us. It's just important that you don't delete this. It's sometimes when you're first using Darktable, you see this and you think, oh, that's weird. Why do I have that? So if you just send, if you make an edit to a picture and then just send someone the original picture, it won't have any of your edits or changes to it. Just be aware of that. Okay, in the light table area, uh, we can make changes to the to the metadata of the pictures. If we hover over a picture, we see these, these stars appear. By default, everything has one star, a one star rating. And when I was first using this, I thought, well, what's the point? Why would you give them stars? Like, who, who? no one's ever going to look at the star rating of the picture. But what it's used for is to help you organize your pictures. If you go out and do a photo shoot, you're going to have some pictures that aren't that great, and you're going to have some that you just really, really like. So you give them a star rating, and then you can come over here at the top, and there's this sort by. You can drop, uh, select this drop down. You can say sort by rating. Then all of your five star pictures will appear, appear first, followed by four stars and three stars, all the way down to your one star pictures. Again, one star is sort of the default. You can also give the pictures color uh, tags. Down here at the bottom, you can just click on one of these colors. Now this has a little red dot on it. And so these colors, and you can give them multiple, you can give it a, a red, a blue, a purple. Maybe you find a picture and you say, oh, the, every picture that has this person in it, I'm gonna give it a green tag. So you find all the pictures that have that person, give them a green tag. And you can also select multiple at once in this area. So you can click and hold down the control key and click multiple pictures. And then you can tag all three of them with that green dot. Then when we go to sort by, instead of rating, we can sort by color label. And it shows all of our green colors first and then followed by other colors as well and then the non-color labeled ones. So this is just a way to really manage uh, your pictures and figure out what's going on before you bring them into the dark room. Again, if you're just working with one picture, you're not gonna wanna spend much time in the light table, but if you're working with multiple pictures, particularly like a photo shoot, uh, this can be uh, to a big advantage for you. Also, the light table area is where we'll export our picture when we're done editing, so we'll have to come back here to do our exports. 
Let's hop over to the dark room now and take a look at the options there. When we click on dark room in the top right, first of all, you can't select dark room unless you have a picture selected. So if no pictures are brought in, you can't even get into the dark room. But if you select a picture and it becomes like a little bit lighter gray, then you can click on dark room and it will take you into dark room with that picture. Uh, this particular one is a not color, which a lot of the feet, the tools in dark table uh, are going to be color based. So we can't do much with this one, but we can do, for example, um, this exposure, we can still adjust the exposure. So we'll enable this one. And then we can adjust uh, the exposure of this image. And we can see we can make it very, very exposed, or we can make it very underexposed. Um, maybe we'll just make this one really underexposed. And then we'll go to our crop and rotate and we can apply a crop. So right now it's doing, uh, I have it set to an eight by 10. We can do freehand and just select an area that we want to crop out. So we can just zoom in really close to like one person and really kind of crop in just how we want. Or uh, we can come over and instead of freehand, we can select like this eight by 10 and we can say, we want an eight by 10 picture. And then it will say, all right, no problem. However you scale this box, it'll always be formatted uh, in an eight by 10 aspect ratio. So we can do it like this and the sides will be cut off here, but we just double click. And now we've kind of cropped this picture. We adjusted the exposure a little bit. And so let's go back to that exposure and let's make it very extreme because I want to show you if we make it really, really overexposed. Now, when we go back into our light table, that picture looks different than the rest of them. If we want to export it with this super overexposed, uh, we just go to the uh, export. So we select it. We go to selected images. Uh, or no, we don't. We go to uh, wallet selected. We go to export selected. And we just click the export button. And that exports that picture as a JPG, which is what we told it to do. Uh, quality 95%. We didn't make any changes to this. But now when we go to our computer and we go to that location where those pictures are, we're going to see... Uh, all those pictures with their associated uh, XMP files and a new folder called Darktable exported. And this is the picture that we have just modified and processed and exported as a JPG image. So that's just a quick run through. Let's do one with color just for fun. Um, we bring in this one with color here and then we can see we have a lot more. We have this brightness and contrast. We can adjust these colors and adjust the saturation. We can make this a black and white photo. Um, we can come over here. There's all kinds of different uh, options that we're going to look at in the next video, but this toggles whether it's enabled or our favorites is going to be empty by default right now. We click on this color one, and these are kind of some default ones that have a lot to do with color. For example, color correction. So we can apply some uh, some different color to this and give it sort of some different, uh, uh, you know, bring out sort of the different pixel colors in here. Um, we can also, what do we have here? Uh, and there's a lot of different ones. If we go to this uh, down here under more modules, there's all kinds of different ones that we can add in anything we want. So we can do color zones, color reconstruction, color mapping. There's all kinds of different things. And um, we can apply like a vignette if we want to to this. So we enable this one. And now we have this nice sort of vignette that we can adjust the size of it and sort of make this picture a little bit different. And again, we go back into light table and we see that that is changed. So I know I'm rushing through a lot of this. I'm doing a kind of a bigger overview, but uh, I think I'm gonna stop this tutorial here because in the next video, we're gonna spend a lot more time in the dark room going over some of this. But I just wanted to show you mostly the light table in this video and how to organize and arrange and bring pictures in to dark table. So thanks for watching. I'm sure you have questions at this point, but maybe uh, leave your questions in the comments below. And then in the next video, we're going to start solidifying some of this information that we've covered. Thanks for watching. Catch you in the next video.